So if you want a GPU in 2021, there are basically two major things to worry about now. First is going to be the stock availability, the price of the GPUs. We are waiting for it to come down. And second, there's still one more major release that should come out at any time. Let's talk about what it is and if it's going to have any impact on your decision. Let's get started. So today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you're a creative person, somebody who's curious, a lifelong learner, Skillshare is a great way in one place to get different classes in order to just grow as a person, as a creative. If you guys watch me here on YouTube, I do all sorts of tutorials, builds, and likewise on Skillshare, definitely a great place where I've learned how to hone my skills from product photography. Every time I put up a really cool looking computer to product videos, there's a lot of great creators on Skillshare. For example, I've taken the class by YC Imaging and they give you a lot of great filmmaking principles, things that I've applied to this very YouTube channel and Skillshare is a fantastic way to go about doing this. You'll get unlimited access to thousands of classes and you get great feedback from the community and even better news, it's actually really affordable, usually coming in at under $10 a month for a premium membership and the first 1,000 people to go to my link below will get a free trial of their premium membership. That way you can explore. They have so many different categories. Let me know what you guys think down below. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Some say every time you subscribe and smash that like button, you get one step closer to actually finding a GPU in stock that's at least at MSRP and not triple the price like we've been seeing them. All right, so today we're going to talk about GPUs, specifically the stock availability and price, or basically the lack of any stock and really high prices. And we're going to talk about a major GPU release that could possibly matter, or most likely, I think it's really not going to matter at all. So first, let's address the first issue. In 2021, if you you want a GPU, it is extremely difficult to get one. I'm not going to say impossible because it has been possible if you get lucky. If you followed me on the channel, I gave a lot of suggestions between the EVGAQ, between people getting them at Micro Center. Sometimes Best Buy will have a drop. Newegg has had different drops. They have their Newegg shuffle. While it is difficult still to get a GPU, it doesn't mean you're going to be able to get one. There have been people that have been able to score them at MSRP. Now, the people that actually bought these GPUs from scalpers last year actually ended up doing pretty well because now the MSRP prices are pretty much at or above whatever people were charging last year for things like 3080s, 3070s. So pretty much the scalper prices now are absolutely ridiculous. Pretty much now it continues to be the worst time I've ever seen for GPU availability. So I'll give you guys an example. Even something like the 6800 XT, if I walk into a micro center, which traditionally has really great prices, everything's MSRP, everything seems to be priced very fairly, even competitively with the internet, with Amazon. In the past, if you walked in, you would expect to pay maybe 650 bucks, maybe $800 at most for something like a 6800 XT, but because of the massive shortage, these are now well over a thousand. Some models can be 1100 or 1200. Now that's for a 6800 XT, which pretty much performs close to a 3080, or in many cases with ray tracing, a little bit less. Same will hold true for the 3080. Now at $699, the Founders Edition is a true bargain if you were able to get it at that price. We've seen these prices skyrocket basically to the level of where the 3090 is now. If you try to buy it on the secondhand market or anything like that, even MSRP prices are well over a thousand dollars pretty much for most models. So that shows you that it's not like we had a little price bump, maybe $699 turned into $799. We had a massive and very significant price bump. It's been way under a year, way under six months even in a lot of cases for these GPUs. They went, in the case of the 3080, from $699 to selling on eBay for ridiculous prices, over $1,500, some of them pretty much nearing $2,000. And of course, that also pushed the price of the 3090 up. Initially, when the 3090 was released, nobody really wanted them if it was going to be their first choice, just because the 3080 really provided much more of a bang for your buck at $699. 
3090 had sort of marginal performance gains, and if you didn't need the 24 gigabytes of VRAM, pretty much the 3080 really fulfilled your needs for around half the price of the 3090. But now the situation has changed. 3080 proved to be really, really popular because of that fact, and the 3090 at $1,500 seems like a relative bargain if you were able to get it at that price, because now even MSRP for the more basic 3090s are well over $2,000, and if you go up on eBay, you'll easily see 3090s reach over $3,000 on sort of the second hand and sort of on the scalper market. And therefore, this paints a very bleak picture of GPU availability and of the GPU price. They both go pretty much hand in hand. Of course, this is going to be due to all of the chip shortages. And of course, that's also primarily because of huge demand from gamers and even bigger demand from people that are using these GPUs to mine for cryptocurrency. So that certainly has jacked everything up as everything is pretty highly priced right now in the cryptocurrency market. People are really after this type of hardware. We'll see if after July or August there are any adjustments with Ethereum or anything like that that may signal a reduction in sort of uh, people going really crazy for GPUs, but I really don't think so. I think this is something that's going to continue well into 2022, so if you can get a GPU, I would definitely say jump on it, get it now, because prices are definitely going to be going up even more in the future. So now that we've summarized and painted the picture of what the situation is like during the last few months and sort of updated into it's really bad today. What about the next major GPU release? Is that going to have any bearing or any change at all on the situation? First, let's talk about this GPU, which is going to be the 3080 Ti. Let's approach it from stock availability and the pricing issue as the performance. It's interesting, but it really takes a second seat now, I think, to these other criteria that are much more important. doesn't matter if it performs better than anything else in history. If you can't get your hands on it or if it's like 10,000 bucks, really going to be very irrelevant. So first, you can definitely continue to expect the 3080 Ti to be extremely limited in its production, because if you analyze what the 3080 Ti is, it's basically sort of a scaled down 3090. That means it's really going to be using some of the more higher end silicon to sort of make these GPUs. And as we've seen with the stock shortages of the 3080 and 3090, the 3080 Ti, especially being a little bit less in price than the 3090, certainly is going to sell like hotcakes at whatever availability that nvidia gives us so we'll just cut it off right there for stock and availability i think it's going to be extremely limited it may even end up being one of those gpus that are sort of very rare i don't think nvidia is going to be able to ramp up production to meet any type of demand for that gpu and you can kind of see why during the last few months this gpu was supposed to come out even several months ago nvidia has been postponing it for month after month that's simply because they've been trying to focus on the production of the 3080 3090 3070. So certainly something like the 3080 Ti, it's going to be even a little bit more difficult to produce just because of the speed and the quality that it needs. You can assume that it's going to be a little bit harder to come by even over something like a 3080. Now, how would this affect the price of the 3080 Ti? Originally, we had thought the 3080 Ti would maybe MSRP at $999. That made total sense a few months ago between a 699 3080 and the 1499 3090. Now, knowing what we know about MSRP prices, and they're pretty much irrelevant at this point. So if a 3080 is supposed to be $699, but you're going to have to pay $1,600 for it on eBay, a 3080 Ti, if it was going to be $999, you can bet that at least the street price, if you can't get it at MSRP, certainly is going to be well over $2,000, probably close to the 3090, something like $2,300, $2,400. And of course, I'm talking about the scalper price. Now, the MSRP price, which is a lot rarer that you'd be able to get that unless you get lucky, I would say at this point, with the 3080s going for pretty much around $1,000, NVIDIA theoretically could maybe still set a low MSRP price, since MSRP doesn't really matter for like a Founders Edition 3080 Ti, they could say that it's going to be $999, which of course wouldn't make any sense because third party 3080s are already pretty much $1,100 or $1,200 at MSRP for, you know, a lot of models or at least $1,000. So you could see the third party 3080 Ti's being pretty much close to $2,000, I think, especially the more niche and the more high end 3080 Ti's. So 
before we thought that 3090 was a terrible value proposition at $1,500. So now take the 3080 Ti with an MSRP and third party GPUs pretty much approaching or being even a little bit more than what the 3090 was. And if we take into account that the 3080 Ti is definitely going to be a little bit under the performance of the 3090, this is even a much worse value proposition. Of course, if we take the benchmark of what was released last year with that pricing, now that the GPU pricing is pretty much all over the place and very erratic with Nvidia's MSRP being very different than sort of the third party AIO models pretty much the 3080 Ti doesn't really seem to matter. Nobody really needs the performance from the 3080 Ti. Either the 3090 or 3080 seem to do just fine, and reportedly it's going to come in around 12 gigabytes of VRAM now, which is a little bump over the 3080, but definitely not a huge amount to approach the 3090. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.